So there you are, about to start your main save for FM24, but you're unsure of various factors such as how many leaks to load, how to optimize your database to make it run as fast as possible, and various other things. Well, I'm here to help. So I made a video just like this for FM23, and honestly, I wasn't planning on making one for FM24, as I figured the information would pretty much hold up just fine. However, some information has come to my attention this year about the way the game is handling processing, particularly with relating to the number of teams that you have loaded in a certain save, so a video was actually extremely important, and you'll see why when we get into it. I've also done much more rigorous tests on a larger array of options this year to provide a more accurate data set for how the game handles and processes your saves to find the most optimal set. I'll swing back around to that though later in the video as I realize a lot of you will just want the optimized database setups and an installation guide and I don't want to waste too much of your time but I do urge you to stick around though as some of the information I have later may still be pertinent to your saves even on a small level. But for now let's talk database setup. Now I imagine for a lot of you the process of starting a save is a fairly simple one. You hit start new save, you hit your career, then you pick your team and then you choose game mode and with there's new game modes this year that's crazy we're not going to talk about that today though we're just going to use original and then you hit advanced setup, choose the the leagues you want, blammo, done. This is a fine way to do it, not an issue, but there is a better way that will give you the same results, but faster and arguably better. And I'm going to show you that today. So obviously just choose whichever one of these you want. It doesn't really matter. That's up to you. Then you hit advanced setup. Then once you're in here, choose the league that you want to actually manage in this year. So we're just going to choose a random, I don't know, Croatia. The next part though is very important. We go up to the top right here where it says large, small and medium, and we hit advanced. Then we're going to want to add continents. So I would just one by one, add all of these continents here. Don't touch them yet. Just add them all in or to your liking, I suppose. Once that's all loaded, you want to go and tick certain boxes. I'm going to show you which boxes to tick. So we want current international players, players from top division clubs, players from top clubs, players with continental reputation, and players from clubs in continental competitions. And you want to copy that format, basically, across all of these continents. And once you're done, it should look something a little bit like this. Make sure that you don't accidentally tick players based in nation or players of nationality, especially in Europe, or the game will explode as it will try to load about 500,000 players. But I've made things even easier for you. So I've, in the description, put a link to my custom database setup, which you can import straight into the game. So download the file in the description, whack it in this folder you're seeing right now on the screen. And then when you come into this menu the first time, you should be able to click load custom game setup and it will appear in here. And then you can just load it in and it will all work perfectly fine. Don't worry if this number in the bottom right doesn't actually update when you import it. When you hit OK, it'll do it. So what this is essentially doing is it's loading the players into your save database, but not the leagues themselves. That way you get the benefits of being able to sign all these cool players from all around the world, but not the drawbacks of having to process the leagues by having them switched on in any way, other than of course the one you choose to play it, in this case, Croatia. The best thing about this, though, is that because the game is trying to top up the database to keep that number relatively stable throughout the save, the clubs that produce players in this save or have players that are loaded will still be able to produce regens throughout the save, which simply would not have happened before. And without doing stuff like this, we would not have been able to get our Ethiopian wonder kid last year that actually generated at an Ethiopian club, which is wild. Now, this change does mean that you will receive a reduced amount of transfer offers on your players because you only have one league sector active in the actual game. But I've been using this setup over on stream for all of my saves for the past three years where well, you can find me Tuesdays, Thursdays and Sundays. Drop a follow. What a segue that was. And I've not found it to be particularly irksome at any stage. However, there's an update for that this year that I think could actually fix that problem, which we will get to a bit later in the video. Now, the game's going to scream at you in the top right here about the stars and how your computer's going to explode and the world's going to die. Uh, ignore this. This number basically just relates to the stars. This doesn't actually tell you how fast it's actually going to be unless you're loading the leagues in a normal way. Now, if you wanted to do a journeyman type of save where you're going to be moving from nation to nation, things do get a little bit more complex, uh, but there are some sort of workarounds for this. However, this setup is far better for your sort of one club saves or saves where you don't plan to leave the country that you're in, even if you move clubs. However, if you did want to modify this for a journeyman type of save, my advice would be to start with a smattering of leagues that you want switched on, then maybe a couple view only on top of that, and you can then adjust it on the fly using the add remove leagues function uh, during the game. Unfortunately, you can't add players using this function mid game. That would be an amazing feature, but sadly you can't do that, but you can just add leagues in in the middle of a save wherever you like really but anyway back to the good stuff now these are the settings i normally use down the bottom though i must admit i normally have this ticked off so i can't see all the information about the players but the key one for me is to add players to playable teams but once you've got that set up and seasoned to taste then you're ready to go just hit start game so how do these changes actually impact the game's performance and processing times which is the main factor here so last year i did a couple of six month simulations with some different variables in order to test that but this year i come with much more complete data however i did also repeat the tests that i did last year on fm23 so that we have a direct comparison between 
between the same settings on different games. So a six month simulation with me in charge of Ajax with the top two divisions in the Netherlands loaded on the smallest database possible. Uh, last year, I believe it was around about 15 and a half minutes. I'll put the actual number on screen. This year, it was 14 minutes and 35 seconds, which isn't a huge decrease in time, but it is still a notable decrease in the time it took. The bigger change for me actually comes when you turn on my optimized database setup. So I did the same thing again, but this time added my custom database setup on top of things. Now, obviously the time has got slower because there are more players loaded. Uh, last year, I believe it was 22 minutes and something. Again, it will be on the screen. This year, though, it was 19 minutes and 28 seconds, which is an even larger uh, reduction in the amount of processing time it took between the two FMs. And if you were to turn on even a couple of leagues on playable, even without this database, it would still bring you to 25 to 30 minutes. And that's how quickly the time can add up. But in my more detailed test, I did a three year simulation for each of four different database setups to get much more rigorous and slightly more accurate data to give you an idea of what it's like in the long term for more accurate numbers. So in the first of the tests, I ran a three year simulation with Hungary loaded as the base league in the top two divisions, but then also the top two divisions of five more major countries in the game on a large database. That three year simulation took 65 minutes and 44 seconds. This was to sort of provide a benchmark of how you may set up a save or how you're used to doing so. I then ran a three year simulation on a setup that looks like this with only Hungary turned on as an active league, but with 103,000 players turned on using that optimized database setup. Notably, that is over 60,000 more players. This simulation for the same exact period only took 54 minutes and 17 seconds. That's nearly 11 minutes faster across those two simulations, despite having a lot more players turned on. But this is when it gets really interesting. And this is something that I do believe is new for FM24 because last year this was very different. So I then ran another three year simulation with again, Hungary as the base league, the optimized database setup. But I then added back in those same top five or whatever nations in their second tiers, but this time on view only. And that three year simulation finished in 56 minutes and 29 seconds. So still nearly 10 minutes faster than if I had them switched to playable on just a normal database. And this is important as a few months after I did the last video, I ran some more tests where I turned on this sort of exact setup and was finding slowdowns of up to 40%, basically making it sort of unviable to turn on any other leagues if you were using this database setup. That is not the case this year. We were seeing a slowdown of only 4% with all these extra leagues. Load. That's a 10x improvement. And this leads into how we potentially fix the issue with the lack of transfer offers for your players. Because when a league is set to view only, teams still operate fairly normally in there and will still buy and sell players and make way more offers than they would do if the league was switched off entirely. Uh, the key thing you'll notice as well is that you'll see offers and bids from clubs that are much further down and not just clubs that are in the European places, as was be the case with the normal setup. But again, we'll switch back to that in a minute. Lastly, I just ran a sim of Hungary as the base league and then the other leagues all switched on as playable on top of the optimized database. And that took, what was it? One hour and 42 minutes and 12 seconds. So you can really see the impact that each playable league has when switched on. And what I've been trying to do is find the optimal setup where you don't have to have them switched on, but you can still basically get the same feeling as if they were. But just bringing it back to the view only league and optimized database setup, this for me this year now seems to be the optimal setup that you can have um, if you actually want a bit of extra flavor, don't want those reduced amount of transfer offers for your players and want the best experience overall. And it is now viable seemingly in FM24, whereas it wasn't in the past. And the really important factor is that this method is 16.4% faster than if you were to just load these leagues as playable and not have the optimized database set up on top of that. And that may not sound like much, but over the course of a save, if you extrapolate that out, it's an awful lot of time spent processing that you're now saving. And you also get the benefit of having an extra 60,000 players loaded on top of it. One of the issues with view only in the past is that if you left a league on view only for too long, the teams would essentially end up with no players and grayed out squads as the players would retire, but they wouldn't be replicated with any new players in their squads for the most part. But the view only method combined with the optimized database actually seems to fix that as the players will keep getting topped up by the clubs to keep the database topped up. So you don't end up with that problem either. You still get proper fixtures, proper transfers, proper players. It basically looks like playable, but it isn't. If for some reason you wanted to move, you could just set it to playable. And this brings me to the last point of the video, which is an important one. Why have things got faster this year? And why is this suddenly more viable? Now, obviously the things we're about to discuss are far from concrete, as I've no doubt that lots of awesome optimization has gone on under the hood for this year's game. That just goes without saying. However, some stuff did come to our attention when testing a few different database setups that I felt was worth talking about. And I should preface this by saying that this is not a criticism per se. I just felt that it was important for you guys to be aware of this as some of this stuff could potentially have an impact on your save setups if you're doing certain types of saves. And I thought you should at least know. And that is that the game is no longer loading all of the teams. And what I mean by that is depending on the way that you set up your game database, certain teams, even comparatively quite big ones in the grand scheme of things, will simply cease to exist in your game. To show you what I mean, this is my MTK save from FM23, which I've ported over into FM24 so it's still technically using an FM23 database. If I select every single team on the world screen, I can see that there are in fact 58,617 teams loaded into this save, which is about what you'd expect to see from a normal save, I think no matter what database setup 
you used last year. But regardless, if, however, I set up an FM24 save using the exact same settings, well, things look very different. So if I just select all the clubs in the world on an FM24 save with the optimal setup, you'll see that we're now down to 31,355 teams. 27,000 teams have just vanished into thin air with the exact same setup. In fact, if I run the smallest possible database with only the Premier League loaded, we end up with 27,600 teams. And even if you go through the settings and turn on as many players as physically possible, you know, do all the things I said not to do earlier and end up with about 500,000 players in your database, you'll still only end up with 43,500 teams. So that means that 13,000 teams have just, no, 15,000 teams have just gone missing. Now, obviously, some of these teams will have gone out of business over the course of the last game cycle, but I find it very unlikely that it's 15,000 teams have just gone Nah, don't feel like it anymore. And there was no setup that we could figure out that got anywhere near close to the number of teams that were able to be loaded into an FM23 save, even by default. Now, a key thing to note, and a reason perhaps not to be particularly worried, is that this only really seems to affect leagues that are not playable in the game from the start, i.e. not in the vanilla version of the game. However, I still thought it was worth making you aware because it affects some leagues and countries way more than it does others, no matter what you do. So I have a couple of quick examples for you to show you exactly what I mean, and then we'll get out of here. So on my ported FM23 save, you can see that Thailand has 277 clubs. Even with the biggest database possible this year, that figure drops down by over 120 teams to 151. And using my optimal setup, the same one I'm using in FM23, it drops down to 87. With the smallest possible database, it becomes 15. Though it's still holding some of the biggest sides, of course, but it is a dramatic drop-off. Better example, a bit closer to home, is Malta, which is the setting for my FM24 Twitch save with Sirens. On a database from last year's game, we had 67 clubs. On the biggest possible database this year, it does retain 67 clubs, and I suspect that's because they are obviously based in Europe, which is going to have more European competitions, but you shouldn't have to load 500,000 players to get the same number of teams. With my optimized setup, it becomes 51 clubs. And with the smallest possible setup, it becomes just 17. And importantly, some of the clubs here aren't top flight. And some of the clubs that are missing are actually top flight, including Sirens, literally the team I plan to manage this year, who we've seen get into Europe on one of my other saves. So you can sort of see how that would mess things around a little bit. Now, with a custom database to activate one of these leagues and actually setting it to playable if you're going to manage there, that should clear up most of the problems. But I still think you will be left with some clubs not existing, potentially. Now, there is a sort of semi-workaround, which I think might add a few extra teams, just in case you really were worried about a certain league. So if you go up to this again and tick on Advanced, and obviously this is already in there, but if we go down to Divisions down here and say you were worried about teams not generating in Georgia for whatever reason, you could actually then go into here and actively add those divisions players as well. And that might, in theory, force the game to actually generate that. But you shouldn't really have to do that. But now you can if you wanted to. And one of the biggest areas that this seems to affect is Africa, which obviously is a large place, but there's a lot of countries there that you will no doubt want to do quite a lot of scouting in. And as I know in the past, I've found players from Ethiopian clubs who have been really good, and I wouldn't want that to go away. Last year, Guinea had 57 clubs, and Senegal had 108. This year, even on the biggest setup, Guinea only has 20, and Senegal's has been nearly half to 53. On the optimal setup, it's down to 16 and 45 teams respectively. On the smaller setup, it's only 10 and 15 for Senegal. Now, as I said, this isn't actually a criticism from me per se. I just wanted to make you guys aware of this because you may find yourself in a position where players' histories have all sorts of unclickable teams and things like that. Or you might be in the middle of a save wanting to check a team out and find that they simply don't exist for some reason. But this is almost certainly the reason why. Because I had a look through the transfer history on my 28-year MTK file and found double-digit clubs that we'd signed players from that were simply not in the game this year, either if you turned on the 500,000 database or simply not at all. Now, of course, that may mean that all of these clubs just simply don't exist anymore, but we won't be able to find that information out until the full game is out and the editor is available to us to check. But I just find it unlikely that 15k clubs just disappeared overnight. So it's almost certainly something to do with the way that the databases are being optimized this year. But I thought you should know in case this will apply to you in any kind of manner for your saves. So there we have it. Everything you could possibly need to know to set up your FM24 save and database to go with it. If you have enjoyed this video, drop a like, subscribe if you're new and i'll see you guys in the next one hold your gun capybara bye bye